I'm about to find out if Troy does have a small d- or not. Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. It's time to set your expression to stun as we go blundering into some more love after lockup. We've got some fresh crazy on the menu. I should be priority over you sleeping. Then Amy's got a leaky mother-in-law. You definitely have to take her in spurts. And Shonda wants to get to it. Let's get to it. Good day, bonsoir, and guten tag, Schweig. Thank you for joining us, and big loves to the beautiful people who have subscribed. And graph hallucination watches to the members of the Lucan Manor. Ignoring advice, my beautiful viewer, here's the theme of today's videos. Sometimes life tempts you with ideas and you just want to go ahead and follow your heart. But the ones closest to you tell you not to do the thing. Can I do something real quick? No. But you just go ahead and do the thing anyway. I told you not to do that. You done knocked the f***ing wind out yourself. First in the queue today is Amy and little Troy, who bought a pin to a needle convention. And we're back to that genius move Amy's making by establishing this guy she's never met is the bestest daddy ever. You know, probably, hopefully. He's so excited to have a father in his life. Yeah, he's thrilled about it, clearly. And that's either the caffeine from whatever this is, or the reality of being someone's daddy as soon as you step out of your cell might just be dawning on him. Or, you know, maybe I'm just being judgmental. Maybe there's some sort of hideous car crash up ahead. Yes, maybe there's some sort of hideous... Car crash up ahead. <coughs> and I'm not sure if she's been having the same relationship as Troy because she says that's been consistently showing up for him as a father. Even he had to double take that one with a little say what now? Consistently showing up? What, on the phone? Yeah, well done, Stuart Little Cock. You've managed to pick up the phone. Good job. You may now call yourself Daddy and get a welcome fit for a hero. All right, yes, okay, that's all a bit extra. Maybe it's just me and that stiff upper lip all British people were given at birth, but I don't think a young man should be so ready to have such an intimate physical contact with strangers. Yes, over a couple of years you can foster a relationship over the phone, sure, but to just start jumping all over him is a little much for me. Sure, he's excited and probably hamming it up a bit for the camera, and you know, kids will be kids. <laughs> want more physical boundaries from an 11 year old makes you wonder what the dad thinks of it we can assume that dad knows that the kid is on tv but seeing he's not on the birth certificate we tv don't need his permission to show the child so is the dad aware well hang on a second the dad also amy's ex-husband not only knows the son is on tv loving on some other guy but he was actually in the neighboring cell to troy we can assume he's a deadbeat dad by what Amy was saying, although a counterpoint could be that paying child support is pretty difficult when you're in prison, but no contact is no contact and that is unacceptable. Is the dad bothered about all this? Does he know Troy and therefore knows it'll fail and, you know, might kind of have some sort of sick fun in watching it descend into chaos? Maybe he has sights on coming into the show as the antagonist of this plotline. Well, what we do know is you can't just show up and be someone's father. He sent me the paperwork and now legally I'm his father. Yeah, okay then, yeah, you can go fill in a form too. And he was me thinking he was all about love and stuff. <laughs> I have the feeling that the trouser department isn't the only location that is a bit lacking. Some men buy Lego for their kids because kids love Lego. And some men buy Legos because they've been dying to get their hands on that cool T-Rex skull for the last seven years. This is cool, maybe we can sit down and build it right here. Yes. Deal. Say that. And he was up for attempted robbery, of course, you know, not actually doing robbery. Can't imagine what kind of genius thing he's done to fail at that. I'd personally love to see how he does in the crap at Criminality Cup. I guess we'll have to wait for that kind of amazingness. Speaking of amazingness, it's time to get back to that trouser wowser conversation, as the friend turns the conversation back to a much more amusing topic. So, give me the tea. Apparently it's amazing. It was an amazing night. But was it all that amazing when someone says amazing like this? Amazing. Ah, amazing. Causing great surprise or wonder. And is the wonder what she's supposed to do with that little fiasco? Or is it surprise? Oh my goodness. I've had my back doors remodeled with a 10 ton hammer. That was just crazy. Okay, it's yes, crazy. Like three and a half hours crazy. But what are the reports from the shorts? Was it crazy like, I'm going to require vaginal reaugmentation? Or crazy like flashbacks to Nam? I'm guessing the latter. Then they drop the whole conversation like it's nothing and move on. <laughs> <laughs>
What? How can they do us like that? We wanted to know if it was a bit diminutive in the denim area. And no matter the size of the hallway, there'll always be plenty of room. And don't worry, hog dog chuckers. We've got a coach from Brain Freezer to give you some tips. I'm here to teach you about the small but growing sport of dog tossing. So instead of that fun storyline where we get to have fun at Troy's expense, cheers Troy, we got one about Troy's mum being hard to handle and generally detached, which is the reason why he wants to do such a great job of being a parent. And why not? Why not stop the cycle and start a pattern of positive behaviours? Good on him, I say. Troy's brain and trousers may be as well equipped as a panda in a mating season, but I think he's actually a genuinely caring guy. When I was about maybe two, three years old, my mom dropped me on your head for her friend's house and never came back to get me. Joking aside, that is actually quite sad, isn't it? You know, and I want Troy to have a nice little life with a nice little family. Anyways, at least they gave the mum a name we can all collectively hate. Your grandmother, Karen, is going to be staying the night tonight. Boo, Karen. Yeah. Apologies to you, of course, if your name is Karen. That's got to be a hell of a name when you're trying to have a problem. I knew a Karen once. Did absolutely nothing for the society of Karens around the world. Awful person. A bit like the name Gary or Dwayne. You know they're going to be challenged in some kind of way. Dwayne Johnson, though. Dwayne. I thought it was some kind of joke when he had to go by another name to avoid all that WWE contract stuff. As in, ha ha, look at the tough guy with a silly name. But nope, that's his actual serious name. Like Engelbert Humperdinck. Nah, who wouldn't want to have their dink humpered by this man? Anyway. Amy has her own strategies when it comes to Troy's mum. You definitely have to take her in spurts. <laughs> well then, I'll just shake her hand personally, but uh, you know, each to their own. Then I realised this bit was at the beginning of the show and the version I was watching didn't even mention it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely wasn't. Ah, oh, that's totally ruined all my fun. Yeah, but I don't care. I'm going to relentlessly make fun of him anyway. And to distract you from that, here's a quick montage of all the stunning variety of shapes thrown by Amy's kid. <laughs> Over to Letitia, awkwardly laughing at something that wasn't funny. <laughs> but uh... Over to Ashanta and certified man boy True. And all this pretending not to be broke is getting to Ashanta. I don't think he really grasps how much his money is coming out for an Airbnb. Yeah, I kinda guess it'd be expensive. If only we knew how much this house was costing up. <laughs> Hang on a second. Is that the bungalow in Cape Girardeau? Steps to the South East Hospital, fast Wi-Fi, king bed, hosting by business, called Amber. See? Here's the little bricky chimney breast thing in the bedroom. And why would you use this bed in the loft when you've got this rather nice four poster downstairs? Also, if you look up the pricing, she'd be paying as much to clean the place as she did to rent it. Slightly odd. I did check and she didn't leave a review. So anyway, we're in bed with the Shantra and True. Yeah, I know. I don't like it any more than you do. If you're not even listening to what, what I'm saying half the time, how do you hear is still annoyed at True for having the communication skills of a brick with a mild concussion. And Chu says, It's not that I don't listen. I want to listen, but I just be, it's just be a lot going on in my head. Yeah, you know, it may not look like it, but there's a big brain activity going on here. But Ashanta, who sounds like she needs a bit more glue on those dentures, what's well, true to shit or get off the pot. So you think it's a matter of staying engaged, dating, being friends, or what do you want to do? And Chu says, I think. Oh, that's, a, that's a bit ambitious, but uh, we're behind you, Professor. And whilst he's pondering the answer to life, the universe, and everything, we're off to visit Creepy Kim and Joey. And today they're off to lunch. A minute on the lips, a life sentence on the hips there, Joey. But uh, what do I know? Joey's clearly a hunk of sizzling hot man meat. And he's so hot. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe more of a vegan option, like a poached pear, then I do love the laugh he does afterwards. <laughs> people who look fit tend to attract people who, you know, also look fit. People who look nerdy now tend to attract supermodelly people. And people who look like Joey, they tend to attract chlamydia. But anyone who's smart enough to take back a woman who left him for their ex-husband because she was pregnant with said ex's baby is welcome to Creepy Kim in my book. Then I found out I was pregnant with my ex's baby and I left Joey and I went back to him. She's a nasty piece of wolf in a cheap synthetic woolen coat. She wears that innocent face, but I'm sure she's callous and cold. She's annoyed at her ex because he cheated, but she cheated on Joey with the ex she's now mad at. So by using this true level mathematics, she's clearly the victim and it's all life's fault. 
Anyway, aside from that, it's Joey's lucky night. Well, you know, everything's relative. And Creepy Kim is unveiling the special for tonight. I have had two children since then. The mom bod is real. I am so self-conscious. Says the woman wearing lingerie on TV. It's kind of Wonder Woman in a cardigan. She's kind of got it right and wrong all at once. She's got a half decent instead of legs in her, but she's gone for the thigh length meh. Presumably because she liked to hide her bum. But if she'd have lost a granny cardi, replaced that with a silky dressing gowny thing with a split to tease the leg, she could have hidden her hidey bits and emphasized her assets at the same time. And why this choice with the upper assets? My theory on cleavage is this. You don't need a massive expanse of flesh to be sexy. This badly shaped top part widens her neck by continuing the triangular shape and does absolutely nothing at the cleavage. She made the mistake of going north, south, east and west on the chest. What the hell do I mean? Well, here's north-south cleavage. Here's east-west cleavage. So if she went for the gown approach, she could just chuck on a teddy or something underneath it and get that north-south cleavage. Slipping her neck and teasing her boobies at the same time. That a heart decent bra and we're all good. Or if she went for the east-west approach, shoulderless is always sexy. Including the shoulders would give her neck perspective and make it look less wide. I know, a 40-something-year-old man telling his predominantly female audience what he thinks a woman should be doing with her underwear could be a risky move. But I think women like Creepy Kim forget what's good about them. And everybody deserves to feel sexy in their own body. Last time I saw a girl naked it was... Right before I got locked up. Said the predator to probation. Probably should have said woman, really, not uh, not girl. You don't want Chris Hansen rocking up with the film crew and a fresh taser? I'm not nervous at all to have sex with her. It's gonna be like riding a bike, I think. It makes you sweaty and is good for menopausal women? <laughs> yeah. But no, riding his bike is clearly an honor. And she's aroused by his mere presence. She just gets off anyway when she's with me. Yeah, moving on. And there's a new arrival in the Lalu Lounge. So let's go say hello to Bianca and Daniel. Aggravated DUI. Not exactly sure what that means. Sounds like you got really annoyed at your car, so you drove it drunk to teach it a lesson. But I forgot that in law, aggravated just means and some other stuff. In this case, the other stuff was a bit of third degree burglary. First degree is where someone enters a building to do crime stuff and has a weapon. Second degree is doing building based crime in a commercial location. And third degree is entering a building to do crime stuff, but not actually doing said crime stuff. So basically, he broke into somebody while he was drunk, messed it up, and got arrested while driving away. Genius. Anyways, this is Bianca. Get your 5150s at the ready, everyone. Because there's something a little bit, um... Well, definitely a touch of the old Corellas too, but uh, also, um, well, I don't know, you know, it starts with an A and ends in absolutely window-lickingly mental kind of person, which may be considering the best way to saute your family pet. A bit uh, psychotic, uh, you know, a bit uh, baby reindeer. If my man cannot leave that state, I'm moving to that state. and she has a relatively unusual motivation for getting with an inmate. She was badly injured in a DUI crash, therefore she wants to get with somebody who's in prison for an aggravated DUI charge. And... Wanna kinda save him. Oh dear, men is a project. That's always gonna go well. I mean, I don't think it's impulsive. I mean, I love him. I do like how the friend is pulling a variety of red flag faces throughout the exchange. So to one of that, it's time for a little gallery of faces I like to call, what the hell were you thinking? And that's all I could find of this week's episode. And therefore, the end of the video for today. There is, of course, one final clip, the wholesome clip to leave you with. And this week, it's a lady who's talking to her mother who has dementia. Do you know you're my mama? Uh huh. You do? Uh huh. A while ago, you said you didn't know you're my mama. Well, you act like my mama. Act like your mama. Mm -hmm. no, I'm saying you're my mama. I'm your mama. Yeah. All right. I'll be your mama. Now, do you think that I, I would lay here with just anybody? No. I think you want to have to love them if they want to. Yeah, you do have to love them to lay down with them like this. <laughs> yeah. And I love you, mama. I love you. But you, you do, <laughs> do you know who I am though? Uh huh. Who? Oh, uh, Kelly. Yes, Mama. Yes, I am Kelly. Uh-huh. Well, I love <laughs> Kelly. 
<laughs> and didn't I name you Kelly? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you, Kelly. I love you, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you a while ago you didn't know who I was. I know it well. It was something because it, it, when, when I have some fears, I get here and I'm I'm thinking, my Lord, what in the world am I thinking about? <laughs> you are. Yeah. And what are you thinking about right now? Well, I, I'm loving you. I'm loving you too, Mama. Oh, well, we're both <laughs> doing the same thing. Aren't yeah, we, we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful? Yes, it is. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to amuse you for this little while. Do please like and share, or try one of these other little nuggets of fun. So until we meet again, stay beautiful, love to my three, and you take care of yourself. Hit subscribe now for our plan. Thank you.